Neil Cameron, welcome to Starburst Magazine. Hello. Hello. Thank you for having me. So, um, let's get straight to it. Tell us about Freddy vs. School. Um, well, so, um, Freddy vs. School, it's uh, my new book, my first novel. Um, I'm, a, I'm a comics creator, usually, and this is my first go at writing a book um, with words. <laughs> well, with mostly words. Um, and it's about, uh, well, I've got one here, I can show you. Um, it's about this little guy, Freddy, who is a super-powered robot with many amazing abilities. Um, but he's also just like a regular kid who has to go to school and um, is strongly encouraged not to use his many amazing abilities uh, while at school because they don't like it when you blow up half your classroom with lasers and that sort of thing. Understandably. I, I did find that a problem at school, blowing things up with lasers. <laughs> Serious problem. We can all relate, right? Yeah. So where did the idea for this particular story come from? Um, well, so the character, um, the character's sort of been in my head for a few years now. He's um, essentially the idea came from seeing my son when he was younger and super obsessed with Transformers, uh, running around, you know, as as I think everyone does um, at that age or at any age, running around pretending to be a Transformer and shooting lasers around the place and destroying things, and uh, just thinking. God, imagine if, imagine if he could though, like imagine, imagine if this, you know, little ball of energy and sort of adorableness, but also sort of poorly controlled emotional regulation and uh, impulse control could fire lasers out of his hands and was super strong and could find, could sort of do all the things he could do in his imagination being a transformer, you know what I mean? And uh, that just seemed like a, a funny and also uh, terrifying idea that, that had some legs. So, you do have a thing about robots. How does this does how does this compare to Mega Robot Bros? So um, Mega Robot Bros is the um, is the sort of the comic version. That's the the story um, that appears in the Phoenix, um, the weekly comic for kids, um, and that's sort of um, it's it's the same character Freddy who's in both. But this is kind of his his story. Um, it's just kind of a different a different view on the same world. You know, it's um. And it is, it's weird doing both at the same time because Mega Robo Rose is sort of increasing this big sort of epic story and there's a lot of action and there's a lot of um, increasingly intense emotional stuff going on in it. And then Freddy vs. School is set in the same world and it's the same characters, but it's just him sort of getting in trouble at school and being naughty and laughing at fart jokes. Uh, so sort of having, having both those things going on at once. So it somehow works. <laughs> it's, it's, it's a bit weird, but it works, I think. How different is the process from writing a comic book to writing a novel? Uh, yeah, I mean that's that's been the real sort of um, that's been the real learning curve for me because I've been making comics for years and I sort of you know I sort of know my way around what I'm doing by this point. But um, a novel um, was just uh, I assumed it'd be really easy because <laughs> comics are really hard and you have to do like seven different jobs on a comic and writing a book it's just it's just words in it that's like one of the jobs. So I thought, oh, this will be a piece of cake. Uh, I'll, I'll bash this out. <laughs> and uh, it turns out there's a bit of a knack to the whole uh, writing words in a book uh, game. Um, and I maybe entered into it with a rather blithe attitude. <laughs> um, but yeah, it's, it's really different. And um, the whole process for me has been learning how to write a book. And um, the main difference, I suppose, is with the comic... Uh, and th there's obviously lots of different ways of telling stories with comics. You know, there's as many different sort of storytelling techniques as there are writers. But with my comics, I try and keep it all quite sort of visual, quite cinematic feeling. Like there's not a lot of um, like thought bubbles or not a lot of narration going on in my comics. I try and sort of show you what's happening because, you know, for the age range it's for and the way I'm trying to tell these stories, it's, um, it's more about sort of showing what people do and how, sort of then inferring how they're feeling from you know expression or body language or just sort of the way you frame moments in comics um, whereas with this it's all written in the first person like from his head like it's uh, you know he's the first person narrator telling the whole story um, which is just a completely different way of approaching a story for me because I'm not used to sort of coming out and telling you what's going on in the characters heads you know um, and all he does is talk about what's going on. What would you do differently if you were doing this book again? What What's the big lesson you've learned? Oh, um, well, I think, 
I mean, we went through so many drafts on this book um, uh, that, and the first ones, it started out very much just, it almost wasn't a story at all. It was just kind of long stream of consciousness sort of stand-up routine in the character of of this little robot boy. Um, and so um, I guess having a plan and sort of knowing the story, I, I find it helps me a lot to know the story sort of to some extent and sort of know where I want to end up before starting writing whereas if the process of learning how to do that was going through 20 drafts <laughs> figuring out what the story was <laughs> so if you know that earlier that's probably better you're mostly known for your um your work for writing for a young audience for children um have you considered something more mature i hesitate to say mature but you know what i mean something aimed at an older audience um yeah, I mean, I, I think about it from time to time, but I'm honestly, I'm just sort of having so much fun um, with the stuff I'm doing at the moment. And um, I think it's, you know, it gives you opportunities to do stories that really sort of connect with readers in a way that isn't like anything else, really. And the challenge of trying to do stuff that's emotionally mature but in a way that anyone you know a young age can grasp and can relate to is is just really interesting I, and I, I still feel like I'm learning a lot about it and um get I hope getting better at it and so um, I'm in no rush to do things for grown-ups just so just so I can have people swear and chop each other's heads off actually that does sound quite fun yeah um yeah <laughs> I'll do that <laughs> on, on a related note is there a particular um someone else's play pit is there a, a different world or franchise that you would love to write for and would it be a comic would it be a book and what would it be uh well that's a good question and i'm i, I worry this is going to be a really boring answer but it's sort of probably not <laughs> like you know i think like anyone i always wanted to you know work on the things i loved and you know I sort of started drawing comics because i wanted to draw the x-men you know uh, before I even dreamed of being a writer, that was that was the whole sort of goal. Um, but the more I've the more I've done it, and the more I've worked on my own characters, it's it's just so much more fun making up stuff for yourself. To me, at this point, you know, I'd, I'd I think I'd really struggle if I had to come up with a story about Spider Man off the top of my head or or whatever, you know, because you can't really you can't make Spider Man your own, you know, you can't you can only do so much i guess um not to not to people who do amazing jobs uh making spider-man stories or whatever but um i just uh, the sort of creating the characters and creating whole worlds is kind of the fun of it for me you know so um you know that said if i ever got to draw you know star wars dudes fighting transformers that'd be fun i'd do <laughs> i could do that for a few a few weeks yeah I, I tend to find people either respond one one of two ways. They either have something totally in mind that they're like, you know, that would do, or they're like, it's my world. Yeah. You know, I, I want to play in that, you know, sand pit. Yeah. Um, it's, it's the making up the cool new toys that's, that's the fun part, you know, like playing with other people's toys, I think could be really fun, but getting to make the toys, you know, that's, uh, that's the really fun part. You wrote an entire book about inspiring young artists um what's been the the biggest takeaway you've taken from that because you must get a lot of you know essentially uh robo fan art in that direction <laughs> yeah we do we do um it's um we're doing a, a competition in the comic at the moment for kids to like, design a robot and the winners are going to like appear in the strip and sort of their robots will fight the characters in the strip and kind of this giant sort of futuristic robot wars with I'm hoping some really awesome, mad, uh, you know, child designed robots. So that should be really fun. Um, yeah, so I, I did that. Um, I did the book, uh, it's called How to Make Awesome Comics. And it was, again, something that appeared in the Phoenix because um, I, I was just felt when, when we were launching the Phoenix in the first place, I felt really strongly that, you know, one of the great things about comics is that kids can make their own ones, you know, like, um, and I used to say kids can't necessarily make their own feature films, but now, you know, we kind of can. Like, my son's made several series of his own Doctor Who stories using my iPhone, <laughs> for example. It's kind of amazing what you can do now. But comics has always had that sort of immediacy and that ability for kids to sort of take it and, and make their own. And that's that's one of the great things about it, I think. Um, so I wanted to sort of stress that and encourage that 
for for kids reading comics today who maybe sort of it's a bit newer to them or like I think comics today in a way look so sort of some of them look so great and so amazing sort of so high production value and you know incredible glossy computer coloring and the lettering's all computerized and stuff that it can maybe doesn't inspire that oh I could do that sort of reaction in a child in the way that you know when we were kids reading you know the Beano printed on newsprint or whatever you know you were like oh yeah I can make my own now and and so it's just trying to restate that or sort of make reconnect that you know because kids love making their own comics that's the, the classic thing you sort of get your comic you finish it and you just sort of segue seamlessly into making your own you know um, which, what's yeah. next what's the next uh, thing that you're working on um so um just <laughs> just more 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 um so i've got we've uh, done the next freddy book that's going to be out later in the year um the sequel to that one and the the comic mega overbros i'm just working on so much more of that really it's a it's a weekly strip uh in the phoenix and we're sort of we're going all year with this one it's kind of the biggest story we've we've ever tried to do really it's um it's a huge huge sort of epic and things get very intense and very um the, the scale just gets bigger and bigger and so that's that's keeping me busy all through the rest of this year and then see more of that really I'm, I'm very lucky that i get to you know i get to make work on my own projects and my own stories and i've got a plan for a couple more books worth of mega robo bros and after that i'll oh i don't know i can't really think past that i'll be ready for a lie down i'll tell you that and um some some very daft questions just to, to round off firstly how would you pitch um freddy versus school to a beloved elderly relative <laughs> um now it you might not like this you might, because of all the fart jokes but it's got some nice drawings in <laughs> if you could rescue one piece of art one thing created by someone um music illustrations plays whatever any your know, art um and have that last stand the test of time what, what would it be if i could rescue it from just from, from entropy the ravages of time yeah. okay um i would I'm, I'm gonna cheat and rescue uh the power of the daleks the uh first patrick Troughton serial <laughs> of doctor who because uh, oh no no evil of the daleks always wanted to see evil of the daleks and it doesn't exist anymore because they used to wipe their old episode it drives me mad but um yeah i'd love to see evil of the daleks that'd be great that's a good call actually i don't think anyone's done that yet, yet. that's a really good call um, it's, it's a hypothetical so i'm gonna break the laws of time <laughs> and causality and watch some patrick Troughton. yeah i mean if you're going to break the laws of time you might as well do it with doctor who as well i mean that makes exactly sense. right um so Autobots or Decepticons? Uh, Autobots, absolutely. Dungeons right or, or <laughs> Dungeons or Dragons? Oh, dragons, I'd say. Um, Futurama or The Simpsons? Oh, see, that's tough. That's tough. Um, yeah. yeah, yeah. Oh, that's really tough. Um, future armor because it's got flying cars in, and you know, come on. Doctor Who or Doctor No? I think I think I've made my feelings clear. And finally, truth or beauty? Oh well, you know, in my life, I guess I have to go with what's possible, so I'll go with truth. <laughs> Neil Cameron, thank you very much for your time. It's been an absolute pleasure. And the the book's coming out very soon. So. Uh, yeah, yeah, it's out now. All good bookshops. Um, uh, buy it for a child, you know. They will enjoy it.